What's up, everybody? It's Monday. We're going to recap the weekend, those studs, those stinkers, and we're going to break down a whole bunch of news. Don't miss it. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. We're happy to be with you this wonderful Monday, November 11th. It's what's Veterans Day. Yeah, what's going on, veterans? We want to give a shout out to all of you who have served and sacrificed for this country. Thank you. We remember you today, Monday, November 11th, 2019, getting through week 10 here. Andy, Mike, and Jason back. There was some good, some bad, some ugly, which is ironically our three nicknames. Not going to mm. say who's who. Mm. I call ugly. <laughs> well, that made that easy. <laughs> Not the one I thought we'd be competing for. Mm. You know, I just wanted to get it right out of the way. Lots of craziness, as always, in the fantasy football landscape for Week 10. We've got a Monday night football game this evening. Very unlikely that George Kittle will be out there tonight, mm. which really does affect my view of the outcome. And I, I, you know, Seattle's a great team, and George Kittle's such an important weapon. So I'm, I'm curious to see what Jimmy G – like I moved Jimmy G down in my rankings after this because yeah, he, he's it. got his, his best weapon missing. But uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, the fantasy footballers.com. It's Monday. We hit the social media. We asked you for some one liners from the weekend. Mm, yes. A lot of stories about Cooper Cup's situation. We've got Cup Cup Goose. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that one. The obvious one Pooper Cup, <laughs> Goose or Cup. Yes. And no coop for you. I, oh, no coop for you. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that was a good one. Lamar Jack spin. Yeah, what? Okay. Yeah, that's great. That spin move, Mike. I understand. I don't, but that I don't, made the list. Right. La Marvelous Jackson. So that, there we go. That's fantastic. Oh no. Oh, oh no. no. Sake one yard clee. <laughs> that's that's a real stretcheroo. <laughs> I love it. Saquon Barfly. Mm, and right. then Saquon Fartly. Yes, let's step back into our domain. Ezekiel smelly it. Oh yeah, take that. Or he's uh, I can't even say that it's one. Stinkiel. Uh oh, he's Stinkiel Elliot? Yes. Okay. Kyler You aren't as sophisticated I, as I'm I I'm not clearly. Kyler Murray. Christian Berserk. Alright, all right. that's alright. I'm down with that. Mike Gross Icky. <laughs> <laughs> Gross Icky. Uh Mike Gasucky. Oh, that's too bad. If it's A.J. Brown, <laughs> flush it down. Or you could go A.J. Clown, but I think we yeah. reserve that for A.B. Where's Waller? Fair. And lastly, Amari Super. He really is. The Yeah, you, know, you could talk have about... have 11 receptions? You could talk about Amari Cooper for days because the difference... They showed it last night on the broadcast of what... Dak Prescott's numbers are across the board, as well as the Cowboys' record, with and without uh, Amari Cooper over the last two years. Like, we make the joke running backs don't matter sometimes. You know, you, you move guys in or out. Wide receivers matter. Oh, yes. Goodness gracious. Chain, I, and he hasn't been paid. That's because passing matters. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. We had a water bet, Mike. Juju, top 24. Yeah. You lost. Jalen Ramsey yes. won that one. Did you hear Juju talk about they They're like, you know, Jalen Ramsey came out and said, he's no Antonio Brown. Mm. And, and then Juju was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he's did, like, did Juju say scoreboard? Uh, oh, yeah. No, he could have. But he came out and said, hey, I'm, I'm not as good as AB is yet, but I'm working on it and that Jalen had a good game. 
But let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right, Weekly Rewind brought to you by the Sleeper app. We did win in our Sleeper League again You're darn this right week. We did. We, we won we, in League are, One. Are we number one in the Sleeper League? One or two. We'll find I, I out. think we lost last week, so we I think we're like eight and two, maybe? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, not bad. Not Shameful. bad. All right. We had some surprises. Big time surprises <clears throat> in the names Matthew Stafford and LaShawn McCoy. Matthew Stafford ruled out. We didn't believe it. This was a situation where Matthew Stafford had played in 130 plus consecutive games. And they've talked about his back for two years. So you hear that during the week, and you say, okay, well, it's, it wasn't, it's a maintenance it was, day. It's like Saturday, like where it's all of a sudden Saturday it was, oh, Stafford, Stafford probably isn't going to play. It's like, wait, hold, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I know we had hold heard on. about it. We talked about it on the show for a minute, but it was, you know, it was like, oh, yeah, he popped up on the injury report with the back issue. But this was not abnormal for Matthew Stafford to be on the injury list with a back issue. But when he was ruled out, very surprising. And surprising because I know he wanted to play. I think he would have played yes. had he been cleared. Yes, he wanted to play with a broken back. And um, he's a tough guy. It's so funny. The 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 handful of people you know I, that comes to mind is Matthew Stafford and Frank Gore, where when they started their career, they were such injury-prone labeled yeah. guys. They were just... Oh my gosh, he'd be good except he can't stay on the field. And now they're like as solid as it gets. And yeah. ironically, I'm bringing this up while he missed the game. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Forte too. Forte he started exactly. his career; they thought he was banged up. And Marvin Jones, though, five for seventy-seven. Galladay, three for fifty-seven and a touchdown. So those guys, they were probably stuck in your lineup, and you didn't die at the hand of Jeff Driscoll. Oh, oh like many have, like many <laughs> have. In the oh, West. Driscoll. LaShawn McCoy was a healthy scratch because, quote, the Chiefs wanted to keep him fresh down the stretch. Well, that was a report from, from one person. Yeah, and, and that was a report that came after other reports talking about uh, some other reasons that they might be benching him. I don't know. That seemed like a make good. Well, uh, Damian Williams fumbled now, yeah, which that is LaShawn true. McCoy had done to kind of get himself out of the good graces. So now what? Well, he yes, he did fumble. He had it, and it was a. It was a pretty egregious fumble. It was he tried to cut back and really make something happen that was not there. Ends up giving up the the defensive score. However, we're now in back to back weeks of 100 plus yards from scrimmage for Damian Williams, and he is the best running back on the team. Well, that might be true, Mike, but that doesn't always matter. <laughs> well, it did this game, but it's hard. I'm not going to read into snap counts on a game they put Lashawn McCoy on the bench either. So right, well, it's a good game. 19 for 77, by far the most carries he's had. 4.1 a carry, five receptions. Start worthy asset every week right now. My point is, if you have two running backs, one is one looks great, he's crushing it for you, and the other one is not doing that. They both have a fumbling problem. You're gonna go with the player who's better. Even though they both have a chance, I would to go fumble. with uh, Pat Mahomes and just throw it all uh, every play. Yeah, nope. all all that said, Fair. they had Pat and they had the better running back, and they lost. Yeah, that was kind of a crazy game. Devonta Freeman did not return to the Saints game. Foot injury, MRI today. Edo Smith got put on injured reserve before the game. Brian Hill will Brian be Brian Hill, very popular name, and he's a good running back. He's much much better than Edo Smith. Um, and so I, I, he's a must pick up to me. Tyler Boyd needed help off the field late in the game. Ankle injury. A.J. Green's still out. They're going to reassess it, though. Right. <laughs> At the end of the year. Yeah, he's gonna, he's they're going to reassess. His, he's not going to be back, I don't think. Brutal. Uh, but if, if Tyler Boyd is out and A.J. Green is out and we've got Ryan Finley who looked like down and out by the end um, – but Alex, yet, Alex Erickson, Auden Tate are the wideouts. And yet Joe Mixon looked outstanding. Yeah, what was that? You want to know what it was? Yes, I do. Something you could have done five weeks ago. Let me tell you what it was. It was 30 rushing attempts. 30 in a game you lost 48 to, what, 13? Oh, because they did that nice last field oh, goal? Oh, no, 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 no. Callahan, Bill Callahan says they won. Oh, Bill Callahan. Yes. Based on the rushing attempt. Yep, you win. What choice do you have, though? With yeah, Ryan you, Finley. you got to give the ball to Joe Mixon. Two receptions, 30 carries. Third consecutive week, you were happy with him for fantasy. There's a 
Hope there's hope for you yet, Mixon owners. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Ty Johnson left the Lions game with a concussion. Uh, J.D. McKissick got ten carries in that game that led them. Uh, Jordan Wilkins ankle injury didn't return. Trey Burton hurt again. Wow. And then we've got uh, Patrick Peterson left with a calf injury mm-hmm. in the Bucks game. Wink, wink. <laughs> what is that? He he left with the playing batis, batisitis. I doubt that. <laughs> I, I would think he left with an injury <laughs> based on I think he wants to play football. Marshawn Lattimore failed to return for the Saints as well. And then it kind of got lost over the weekend, but the Bears did release Mike Davis. And it was based on them getting a compensatory pick if they released him at that time, whatever the case may be, if someone signs him. And so it is Montgomery. And then you saw increased usage for Cohen, it seemed like, in this game. You never know what this is going to do. Josh Gordon's a game-time decision tonight. George Kittle's doubtful. As far as Josh Gordon goes, is it, I mean, I'm not, full hands off tonight? Yeah, I'm not playing him. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, you can't be starting uh, Josh Gordon. I think the issue is if Josh Gordon is there, what does he do to the other receivers that you might be starting? Does he impact <clears throat> DK Metcalf? Does he impact Tyler Lockett in any way? But, you know, he might not even play. All right, let's get into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, where do you begin? How about Lamar Jackson? Oh, goodness. Perfect passer rating. Man. And then he can run it, too. He can run it pretty well. That run was incredible. With, with the jack spin? Oh, yeah, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Uh, he had six defenders that they showed on that play miss opportunities to tackle. That's only because the other five weren't close enough. Right. Otherwise, he would. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, he could. He could. He's the type of player that could get eleven guys. Yes, the second most fantasy points uh, through the first sixteen games to start his career, only behind Mahomes. Jackson has been uh, just a league winner type of player. Mahomes came back, went thirty-six for fifty. For four forty six and three, including a jump pass that was oh, unbelievable. Yes. The is that the McCall Hardman yeah. touchdown? The, yeah. yeah. McCall Hardman is a guy that you can start every week, but you're gonna you're gonna hate if it. If Mahomes is there. Yes, and you only get what? Two two passes. Two two chances every game. McCall Hardman reminds me of the drag racer uh, cars, you know, the ones that you sit at the end and you press a button and then they go five million miles an hour. He just looks like he pushes a button and takes off. Daniel Jones, four touchdowns. He's had some monster Great streaming games. games. Kyler Murray, Jason, yes, big game. There we go. Look, Kyler Murray, I mean, you know, you would hope that when you face a team like Tampa that is very beatable against the pass that he could step up and prove worthy of that, and he did, which is a good sign for future matchups, streaming plays, confidence. And it was nice because he had Christian Kirk back, who obviously will – talk about when we yeah. get to wide receivers because he was awesome and it was nice to see Andy Isabella out there as well the second round rookie who has lightning speed he caught a couple of balls and every time he caught the ball it was like oh I can get an extra 10 12 yards here because I'm faster than you you ever seen Patrick Mahomes and uh his receivers is helpful speed is nice yeah Kyler Murray also on pace for 4,000 passing yards 561 rushing yards the comp before the season was Cam. Cam came out in his rookie year, threw for 4,000 yards. So we hope to see from Kyler. I believe he's, depending on your scoring system, like the number five. Uh, and so he's giving you a great year. Dak Prescott last night, three touchdowns, 397. He's a QB4 on the season. Josh Allen ended up, uh, well, oh, he ooh. ended up excellent. He had a pretty good game. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Yeah. Excellent. Look, Josh. Come on, buddy. Let's run the ball. Let's. Uh, <laughs> this is what we drafted you to do. Please, please run the ball. Yeah, they they got it. Uh, that was an interesting game. Wait, that was his highest passing yards. I'll s- hold on. That's our little note. And they lost. They lost. That Josh Allen had his highest passing yards output of this the year. Has and, been at two sixty six. This that has been accurate. the Josh Allen you've had, though. I mean, we we brought that. Out. He's a two hundred yard passer right now. Yeah. Not running for as many yards as he did last season, probably because he's got some more weapons and the defense is good. But you're basically in a situation where he's probably going to get you 20 points a week, minimum. He, he certainly hasn't been hurting you. That's five straight games with two touchdowns every single week. So, yeah, and, you know, his upcoming schedule, you could keep playing him. 
Miami at least this coming week for yep. sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody else you want to talk about at quarterback studs? We got some running backs. Derek Henry, 188 yards, two touchdowns. He's a running back five on the season. Is this what you expected from Derrick Henry? Mm, no, <laughs> not I. Uh, I did not. And he had a huge breakaway run. I think they clocked him at he. He came in over twenty miles an hour on that run. So that just mag magnificent beast of a man Wait, he's was like running a, twenty miles an hour. Like he, he's he, like a bison in the open yes, plains. That, that is a business decision. Of, <laughs> yes, you gonna like, tackle that? Dude? You're like no, no, bro. I want to live. <laughs> I mean, think about it's getting hit intense. by a car at 20 miles an hour. Okay, if a car is going 20 miles an hour and you get hit, you're you're, you're going you're, you're going to trouble. the hospital for the problems. And he but, weighs, it will, but it's not just hitting. And now the factor in like you're actually trying to hit the car. Right. I'm going to tackle this car. <laughs> According to ESPN stats and info, Derrick Henry has scored six touchdowns of 60 yards or more. In the last three seasons, which is two times as many as any other running back. Dalvin Cook doing Dalvin Cook things. 26 for 97 and one. Another seven for 86 through the air. He's just a great player. He is. Every play, he looks special. He is He is awesome. And if you were to start a fantasy season today and do a startup draft, he would be in that top tier. I mean, you'd be talking... Mean, CMC, who, who would, Dalvin who, Cook. Who would you rather have right now when you talk about Ezekiel Elliott or Dalvin Cook? And I'd throw Saquon into that conversation. Those sure. three guys... At this point, yeah, it would be McCaffrey, and I think Cook would be number two. Yeah, so good for you, Cook. Uh, Aaron Jones! <laughs> While you say Dalvin does Dalvin things, Aaron Jones did Aaron Jones things, which is touch the ball 13 times end up with three rushing touchdowns yeah a little uh jamal charles-esque sometimes if you well, you look at the split it was basically dead even when it came to snaps touches between aaron jones and jamal williams but aaron jones ended up with three rushing touchdowns breaking news all right this is not gonna land well for those of you oh no with austin hooper as your tight end he is getting an MRI on a knee injury suffered Sunday, expected to miss some time. The uh -oh. MRI will tell you how much. Austin Hooper owners are now going to be in tight end flux for a little while. That Ooh. sucks. To lose a tight end this late in the game, the waiver wires are bare. And you, he was the number one tight end yeah, on the season. If you, you know, at this point over, over the rest of the season, if you lose – I mean, I guess we've got two of them, right? Kittle, you lost. Right. You got no options out there. Hooper, stay safe, Kelsey. Yeah, seriously. Christian McCaffrey, great game. Melvin Gordon, Thursday night. We know that he had a great game. How about Ronald Jones? Ronald Jones. There's some good, some bad in this game. 11 for 29 on the ground is not great, but he scored. And then 8 for 77 on eight targets. That's the bigger Surprise. Did you call his USC uh, coach and let him know he's matured? Look, I, I, I mean, if you watch the game, he yes. lo he looks awkward catching every single one, bobbling them, corralling them. But I don't care. So does Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette is not a smooth receiver, but if he's getting five, six targets a game, great for fantasy. And yeah, Ronald Jones is is a guy that needs to be in your lineup going. Forward. I have to read this. Uh, this go. Uh, John Daigle posted this. In high school, he had seven catches. Final year at USC, 14 catches. His rookie season, seven catches. Prior to week 10, eight total catches on the year. Sunday, eight catches. Yeah. So they used them. We all saw it coming. And Barber had some good plays in this game, too. So you I just. I will say the eight receptions is probably the outlier here moving forward. He is definitely startable, but gets the Saints next week. That's if not you tell nearly me, as exciting, exciting as Arizona. If you told me that this was the new standard for Ronald Jones, I would question you as an analyst based on his entire life. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I agree with you. It has to be considered an outlier. Before we get too excited about of Ronald course. Jones of like, oh, Ronald Jones is an every week RB2, I'm just pumping the brakes there. Yeah, I, I, will, I will say it, it will be, you know, you can start Ronald Jones going forward. But this specific week against the Saints is going to give you pause. Yep. We'll give Joe Mixon the honorable mention here in the Stud Muffins, 30 for 114. I still I, I respect Joe Mixon for how hard he plays 
while losing. It's not an easy thing to do, and when you watch them, they're the worst team in football. And I feel like carry 27 for Joe Mixon has the same level of juice as carry one. So I'll and, give him credit there. And now we are learning that Giovanni Bernard has suffered a sprained knee. Well, there you go. So it, saw two more carries coming Joe Mixon's <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got wide receiver stud muffins momentarily. Before we get into that, we want to thank Harry's for sponsoring today's episode. Look, humans have been shaving for thousands of years, but the secret to a great shave, it really hasn't changed that much. That's why Harry's does not overcharge you to add gimmicky features to their razors. And I can speak from experience when I say they're just high quality, great razors that lead to a high quality, great shave, a uh, close shave. It's an easy shave. It's everything you want. And they return you to the essential, which is quality, durable blades at a fair price. Less than uh, just two bucks a blade. Cut out the middleman. High quality bra uh, blades at factory direct prices. And the best part is they give. there's no risk in trying them out. If you don't love the shave, they just give you a refund. So you can uh, try it out yourself. Listeners of the show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash footballer. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip. Five blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com slash footballer to start shaving better today. We'd like to thank today's sponsor, Quip. When the bad breath comes along, Andy, you can quip it. Oh. Jason, when the plaque is on your teeth, you can quip it. <laughs> quip. <laughs> well, they've been a longtime sponsor of this show. I love my Quip toothbrush. My entire family is outfitted with their own Quips because they make it easy. They make brushing in the morning easy. It's got sensitive vibrations and a built-in timer to help you know I am brushing the correct amount of time. Look, it's, it's hard. It's hard to actually know how long two minutes is. That's how long you should be brushing, and your toothbrush lets you know with 30-second pulses to ensure an even, clean, and they have an automatic delivery subscription they're giving you new brush heads every three months that's what the dentists recommend you want to keep your bristles clean get it get a new and quips got you covered and right now you can get quip look look at this quip starts at just 25 dollars. you'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers this is a simple way to support our show and start brushing better but you have to go to get q u i p dot com slash footballers get your first refill free trust me you gotta get the quip gotta quip it you gotta quip it this holiday season all right wide receiver studs what a game for christian kirk yes. six for 138 and three on 10 targets this is outstanding the rapport between kyler and Kirk is there. there. There was a great rapport also with Kirk and the Tampa Bay secondary. Yes, they really built a They solid, had an understanding. They, they built a relationship, but Kirk kept them at arm's length. Yes. And ultimately, three touchdowns on 10 targets. The first game back, you could see this was Christian Kirk as the one on this team and everybody else. And then this game, a real breakout performance, three touchdowns. Rest of season, this is... Christian Kirk's a wide receiver too, is he not? He he should be. I mean, the, the matchups are not they are not great for Christian Kirk. We got another matchup against San Francisco bye week. The Rams, and it, it's just it's it's tough sledding. But I I think that Kirk is a low end. Yeah, too. it's awesome to see him break out. But I was going to ask the question: or, Does that mean you definitely start him next week? I mean, last week against San Francisco, he was two for eight. Yeah, next and, week and against that was San at home. Francisco, uh, you know, it's it's going to be, you know, hard it, to start him. Yeah, and then the bye week after that. I mean, it's all about the options that you have on your roster and whether you want to pivot or whether you want to believe that, that he can build on this. The nice thing about Kyler, and you saw it repeatedly in this game, is he can escape the pocket, which extends the play, and you ask the best cornerbacks in football whether they can defend somebody through a, uh, you know, when the quarterback's running around for five, six, seven seconds, you can't. If – uh, I, you know, I th I think Christian Kirk is for real. I mean, he was one of your my guys, Andy. He's obviously going to be a, a, a solid wide receiver. But if your trade deadline hasn't passed, would you be willing to trade high on Christian Kirk knowing the next 
three weeks As are in sell him. I, mean? I, I, yes. Yeah. I, I would sell, be, sell high. I'd be fine doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, San Francisco, then the bye week, which you're not going to be able to play him then. And then Ramsey. And then Ramsey and then Pittsburgh. And then, you know, it's not going to be easy. Darius Slayton. Slayton. 14 targets. <laughs> what? We, we, like, we, we were mentioning this guy in passing. Uh, when we were breaking down the matchups for the Giants, the matchup was plus against the Jets. You want players going against that team. And then you had Ingram out. You had Shepard out. And it was, okay, Golden Tate's going to be great, which Golden Tate was a beast. And it was, okay, yeah, you could play Slayton. He's he's very – he's interesting. He hasn't really been a target machine, kind of a two receptions a game type of player. But 10 for 121 and two? What? I, I love it when this – <clears throat> excuse me I love it when this happens for young players because it makes you you know it's not just maybe this is not just an outlier type of performance the rapport he's building with Daniel Jones uh, opportunities for him in dynasty and moving forward this was a breakout game plain and simple 10 for 121 and two the thought was you could play him but he's got a score on his three catches not his 10 catches he only had five catches the previous three weeks explosive game Great game. Daniel Jones was great in this one, and, you we, know, Slayton's interesting. We actually played against him in one of the leagues where we share a it's team. Preposterous. Our, our opponent picked up and played Slayton. Yeah. Doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> Amari Cooper, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill, since returning from the injury, oh. wide receiver 3, 4, 27, 4, 3. Yeah. So eleven for one fifty seven and one. Nineteen. There was a targets. part. There was a part of this game where, and you got to understand, tilting Jason is a Jason that really it's kind of like a biohazard. You need to get away from it. It's Chernobyl. And there's some sort of uh, there's radioactivity. The closer you get, but you can still get sick from a distance. Try. There was a part of this game where Jason saw Tyree Kill go down. <laughs> And it looked like he may have re-injured the same shoulder problem. Which, to be fair to Jason, Tyreek Hill, we had been... He was writhing. Yes. And this was his... If you don't remember his situation in his shoulder, it was, okay, if you go out there and play and you re-injure this, you are going to have actual medical problems. That's why he was held off of the field for so long. He goes down, starts writhing in agony, grabs his shoulder. I mean, it was like the same... The same looking yes. injury came right down on that shoulder, that cl that clavicle. Yes, and then the uh, the reactor began to leak <laughs> for Jason, <laughs> and we were all feeling it. And then all of a sudden, he runs back out on the field, and he's the same Tyreek Hill. So that's good news. Amari Cooper, dominant, uh, absolutely stellar performance for him. He makes such a difference. <laughs> Just keep those targets up. It's Dak. tough to hit that because it reminds me of Cooper Cup. All right, Golden mm. Tate. Four for 95 and two on eight targets. Michael Thomas, a great game as well. Welcome back, Mark Andrews. Hey, oh. Mark Andrews had a huge game. Six for 53 and two on eight targets. It was nice to see. He's been targeted seven plus times in eight of nine games. He likes to play Cincinnati. What did he do the first time against Cincinnati? Six for 99. And no touchdowns? Correct. Okay. And then he scored <laughs> twice in loser. this one. Yeah. Kyle Rudolph, one of the. Better what? catches of the year. That catch was incredible. The one-hander? Yeah, because he never touched it with the other hand and secured it with one hand to his body I and toe tap. I want mitts that size. That would be nice. Because I know how big the real NFL football is. To just just grab it like a baseball. I was going to say, I imagine you out there with a right-handed and left-handed baseball glove. Just <laughs> <Yes>. grabbing. <laughs> Is that allowed? Can I can I wear these? You can Rep try. I would love to see you. Catch I them. was I've been told gloves are okay. I believe the Walrus would use a couple <laughs> yes. of those. But yeah, Kyle Rudolph four for fourteen and two, so touchdowns a plenty. Travis Kelsey a nice game. Greg Olson eight for ninety eight on ten targets. Perfect game script in this one. I mean, drive after drive to come back. Olson was a go to player. Somebody you could rely on in the middle of the snow, mm -hmm. which uh, – and then – And I think you can roll with him next week against Atlanta. And then, my goodness, if you wanted to see the reactor going wild in the first half of this game, O.J. Howard! Oh, yeah. Four for 47 and a touchdown on seven targets. Jason did not melt into a goo. No, I was very happy about that. Played him. 
started him. It, it kind of it washed out the David Johnson thing because we're about to get to the stinkers of the week. And David Johnson. You probably didn't suck. wash it out for those oh. that played David Johnson. It did, no, it didn't. But maybe for, for you, for myself, it was it was nice. I took two risks, and one of them paid off, and one of them no, was risky. One business. of them did not. Stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right, let's get into the quarterback stinkers. Let's start with. Um, Mitchell Trubisky with makeup. Jared Garf. Oh. Jared Garf, 22 for 41 for 243. Two picks, one fumble, no touchdowns. Yuck. Mike was smart to pick Pittsburgh in our weekly office pool on the basis of Jared Garf being atrocious on the road. 58% completion percentage, 6-6 six to six touchdown to interception ratio. 6.66 yards per attempt. Oh, no, Mark of the Beast. Before you get <laughs> mad at me about my comparison, let's be clear, over the last 17 games played, Mitchell Trubisky has four more touchdowns than Jared Garf does. That's because he had a six-touchdown game. Uh, no, I would say the other 17, 16 games matter too. That's a very big indictment on Jared Goff. And when I started tweeting about the Rams, the Rams fans were quick to remind me it wasn't. It's not just this year; it was the back half of last year too. Yeah, this was this was not something that just suddenly came out of the blue. They do not look the same. They do not feel the same for fantasy owners. Mm -hmm. Whether you're Cooper Cup this week, Robert Woods most of the season, he had a fine game this game in PPR leagues for sure. And I will say, Goff is on pace to throw for over forty six hundred yards. He, he's not. He's not bad, but he's completely a streaming option. He's not a guy yes. that you can play week in yeah. and week out. That's Next fair. week, he's at home, but it's Chicago. I'm not playing him against Chicago. We saw how he did against Chicago last year. No, thank you. But the two weeks after that, Baltimore and, and Arizona. I'll play him against Arizona, not uh, Baltimore. At home. Yeah. I think that's going to be a high scoring game. I'll play him against Baltimore at home. I think Baltimore is improving on their defensive side. Yeah, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to poop all over Jared Goff in general. I'm just talking about the Rams in general. And really, you know, any player in today's NFL's passing game has stream-worthy consideration. Every single player, based on matchups, there's no question that a guy can go out there and have a great game. I'm just kind of disappointed we don't see this well-oiled machine. I mean, it hurts girly owners. Sure. hurts everybody. And this was coming off a bye where usually McVay has a history of any time that he has had extra – time to prepare they come out on fire the and well while, while we can be upset with golf drew Brees, this this one hurt really real bad against atlanta at home coming off of the bye he was my number one quarterback 32 of the week. for 45 for 287 yards and that is the end of the fantasy stat line wait no how many touchdowns i was at the end Zero. Zero touch. That was brutal, man. And you kept thinking. Brutal. That, because one, it, that one hurt. This was a perfect game script for him. Atlanta yes. comes out, jumps off to a lead, and you just assume, okay, it's Drew They'll Brees' get it time. Back. And it's at home. I mean, they had, like, I feel like four or five drives. Kamara's back. Jared Cook is back. The, they're ready to rumble, and it, it just never happened. And they couldn't protect Breeze. All of a sudden, the Atlanta Falcons, who have no pass rush whatsoever, were dominating the awesome offensive line of the Saints. Is this just a throw the game in the garbage? I choose to believe that, yes. I think it's a game that will save Dan Quinn for a little while. <laughs> six, sacks, oh, wait. six sacks is the most sacks that Breeze has uh, suffered since 2013. Yeah, it, was, it made no sense. If you were going to tell you me. You remember how close I was to calling this game? Yes, you were. That Atlanta would win this one. And then once I realized it was in New Orleans, I couldn't do it. But something just felt like the Falcons would divisionally challenge them. I don't know how it happened. Like you said, I think Alvin Kamara had plenty of Monday Pundays in there because people were disappointed in single-digit fantasy. Just ridiculous. And then Aaron Rodgers. Back-to-back -back weeks now. 
17 for 29, 233, end of sentence. So for Aaron Rodgers, though, what, while like the Drew Brees one hurt, they, and that's the, the Aaron Rodgers fantasy output certainly hurt you, but he played very well. He just happened to have well, – There were three Aaron, Aaron Jones rushing touchdowns. He just happened to get robbed by three Aaron Jones rushing touchdowns. It, yeah, I, I mean, 233 yards is nothing to be excited about. It was – I'm just talking about the actual play. What, but 233 yards on 17 completions compared to 287 on 32 completions for Breeze. Yeah, is this the floor for Aaron Rodgers if the running game is working? Yes. My concern for Rodgers is we spent the whole day talking about these studs. You know, Tyreek Hill's speed, McCall Hardman. You know, you saw what Christian Kirk's speed did. No disrespect intended for the Lazard King or for – you know, well, some disrespect intended for Jimmy Graham. But when the majority of these targets and downfield targets are going to Lazard and Jimmy Graham and Patrick Mahomes gets to throw to McCall Hardman and Tyreek mm -hmm. Hill, you do cap your upside for Aaron Rodgers for the big play type of situation. MVS has been the only one that kind of gives him those plays, but it's literally like a shot a game. So that's I, – I don't understand this, and maybe you guys can explain it to me. But how do you not equip Aaron Rodgers in the offseason? And I don't mean with a rookie because I don't think that's the way to go. Rodgers has got too many grimaces for a rookie. You need to bring in a veteran player, A.J. Green. How is he not going to be a pass? I mean, put somebody on the team that Rodgers can go to work with over this next three or four years. I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I don't I, get it. I agree. They, I, they need speed. They need veteran speed on the outside. I think that that's what would help. I don't think they need A.J. Green specifically because I would go after a player that could give you the next three good years and isn't D.U.N. <laughs> oh, calling his shots. I know, it, it, it's not worthy of an argument because he's hurt right now. So if, if he does well, then you'll be wrong. And if he stays hurt, I'll be wrong. Brian Hoyer is real bad. 18 for 39, three interceptions, trash game, Ugly throws. Yeah. You were disappointed. Get healthy percent. Yeah, quickly. All right, running back stinkers. We Unbelievable stat line. Uh, 13 carries. 13 for, carries. Wait, wait, wait. I want everybody out there that doesn't know, how many yards did Saquon get on 13 opportunities to get yards? One. He got yard. One yard. <laughs> 13, <laughs> he, he gained... Uh, he got yards? So, so that means it was a little less, just a little less than an inch per carry. <laughs> I have to give a shout-out to FF Today on Twitter that posted a picture of a yardstick and said, Saquon Barkley ran this far on 13 carries. It is the fewest rushing yards by any non-quarterback with 10-plus carries since Reggie Bush had negative five yards on 11 carries in Week 9 of 2006. He has 29 rushing yards in the last two weeks. He is... There are questions about his health. He did go for an x-ray after the game. He was matched up against the New York Jets, guys. Yeah, this was this was rough. Zeke, 20 for 47. I didn't think he looked good against Minnesota. I don't know if he was trying to do too much against that defensive front. Minnesota deserves credit. But Zeke was consistently cutting back into the defensive line in ways that were peculiar to me. And only two catches for Zeke. He's, Are you panicking about the output for Zeke? He has been. It's weird because right now he's, you know, before this week, he was the running back six on the year, which is, that sounds great. But you feel like he's almost been a bust this it's year. The, the last three games he's been over 100 yards, and he's scored in two of the past three. The, before yes. this, yeah, this week sucked. And the, but but the, he, was, he was getting I'm on the right track. I'm talking about the whole season. I mean, right 100%. now he has three games – where he has finished as a top 12 running back on the season. L last year, the year before, the year before, it was every single week. He would have maybe, maybe three games, and usually it was like one game through the course of a season where he wasn't a top 12 back. But most of this year, running back 15, 14, 19, but 14, run, 17. Run the past three weeks. Before this game against Minnesota, what were his three finishes? 17, 4, and 6. Two, so okay. he had two top 10 finishes in that stretch. But look at the whole season. I mean, you can't really say he's getting on the right track when last week he was 17 and then this week he was worse. That's not the right track. Yeah, I mean, he's not catching as many passes. 
He's not scoring as many touchdowns. He's certainly being utilized heavily, and in most weeks you're going to be able to lean on him for, you know, an RB, uh, a consistent double-digit game. But it has been a disappointing year for him if you drafted him to be, you know, a number one guy. A Christian McCaffrey, or, a, a, you know, a Z. Yeah, I mean, he was I, taken over Christian McCaffrey in a lot of leagues. He was taken over Dalvin Cook. He was taken over all of those guys. When when the suspension, you know, if I, I was often saying through draft season, if we knew for sure that he was uh, not holding out and was going to be playing, he he would have been my number one. And right now, don't get me wrong, it's not like he's been bad he's on pace for 1400 rushing yards that's great he's a very good running back but only 341 receiving yards and you know the touchdowns haven't really been coming so I'm just saying he's been disappointing based on what you hoped you wanted a guy who's going to come in here and win a bunch of matchups for you he just hasn't done that I just think this conversation is very interesting coming off the heels of talking about Barkley and Barkley's sure. been extremely disappointing too well, and that's but why he's he's also been hurt and may still be hurt. So you have kind of a you have an out. Yeah, I mean, if if Barkley was giving you these games week in and week out, you'd be kind of you wouldn't be angry, but you'd be like, well, that's not what I signed up for. That's all we're saying. Yeah, fourteen for how many? How many multi touchdown week? games does Zeke have this year? Multi touchdown games, none. Yeah, zero. So he's not winning. He has never won you a week with a performance and. That you've seen a lot of different things from Cook. Uh, just so you know, the, the last two games, the pace for Saquon would have 232 yards on the season. <laughs> That's not fair. That's well, not he, fair. On, on 216 <laughs> carries. So, wow. it's just funny. Yeah. Uh, speaking of not funny. Mm. <laughs> yeah. David Johnson. Yuck. Five carries. I apologize. Two yards. One catch, eight yards. And a fumble. 45% of snaps, a fumble. He got benched. He got benched for his play. Kenyon Drake, 16 touches, 63% of snaps, looked much better, didn't look great. There was a play we had to you know, rewind and watch the replay because it was, it was comical how s slow and low effort it looked. David Johnson gets a handoff. I know he's you know waiting for the offensive line to do things, but he just... He just looked bad, and you know we keep uh, my whole rationale for why I thought he was going to have a good game was we heard there was going to be a lot of two back sets, and, and there, there was, and there were, yeah, but they weren't using David Johnson in the passing game the way that we had hoped. Uh, I had that uh, head to head matchup, you know, with Smiz, mm -hmm. and uh, my team was great. I had Marquise Brown, Devontae Adams, Parker, OJ Howard, Travis Kelsey, but my running backs were David Johnson and Saquon Barkley. Did you win? I lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you have to be hands off of David Johnson. My, for me, I wasn't willing to play him till he reestablished himself in the offense. You, that's my policy going forward. Reestablished, then I'll look your direction. If you played him two of the last three games, he's been active for. You wanted to claw your eyes out. David Montgomery and Devin Singletary, two disappointing performances. The Bears had released Mike Davis. The matchup was against the thirty second best. <laughs> Detroit Lion Rundy, he only managed 60 yards. And they, they were up against the team with the worst run defense and a backup quarterback. Yes. And they did win. They, so yes, there's that. they did win. And then Devin Singletary, was, it was disappointing, only 11 total touches. He had seven targets but only caught three of them for eight yards, and Frank Gore continues to get the goal line. Lee. So they have Miami next week, though. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with starting Devin Singletary as, right now. as will I. And then uh, Jalen Samuels. Yeah, and now Con Connor's gonna be back, so Samuels. Oh, just... don't say that for sure. Don't say that definitively. Uh, it's already being reported. Oh, it can be reported, but you thought it last week. Yeah, okay. it was reported that he was gonna play okay, last well, week for a minute. Too. Uh, I'm I will I'm the source. Mike okay. Wright reporting. James Connor will play on Thursday night. Okay, Latavius Murray five for twelve. Two for seven. There was talk of more of a timeshare. This game certainly was not conducive for any sort of running success. In fact, the only reason Alvin Kamara had any success was garbage time, dump off passes. Yeah, you would. He he belongs completely in the stinkers of the week. He was so terrible until the garbage time dump off passes at the end of the game. But I mean, what can you say? Kamara and Latavius Murray had to go up against that awesome Atlanta front <laughs> sorry yeah that was exactly. my natural reaction 
We know some here, – here's some stinkers at wide out. Get your reaction, guys. Cooper Cup, what do you do with Cooper Cup goosing on four targets? You you take the pinch on the butt and you move on. Yeah. And He's you, Cooper Cup. You play him at home against Chicago. That's a hard pinch. It's a hard <laughs> – that's a, that's a bruise pinch. It is. That's one of those you where you go – You the skin. Yep. Ouch. Ouch. The snake bite. That's what we call those back in grade it school. Is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the, uh, the thumb goes under the yeah. index finger. Oh, that's a bad pitch. On the yeah. booty? Well, I didn't get him on the booty then, but this <laughs> one was on the booty. Odell Beckham, 5 for 57 on 12 targets. See, this is a pretty good game for him. They, they tried to make it happen. Or Baker tried to make it happen. 12 targets is uh, – that's a lot. He got the that early game, deep target. Look, Baker's not a good quarterback. This year, he is not a good quarterback. Last year, he was a great quarterback. We'll find out what the truth is as they develop the offensive line over the next few years. But Odell Beckham has just been bad. I mean, There seems not- to be a disconnect. Yes, so because he do- he doesn't seem to have the same problem throwing to Jarvis Landry. No, Landry, wide receiver seven this week, wide receiver 18 last week. Landry's averaging 11 targets a game. Definitely feels forced. I think that's part of it. I think part of it is let's keep Odell Beckham happy by manufacturing targets that might not be the best thing for our offense, but simply add to the stat line. That's how it feels. Doesn't feel like an organic situation. Uh, has a, a really difficult matchup on Thursday against Pittsburgh. There was a pretty big disconnect between Baker and Jarvis last year. I'm not saying, well, like, this is the narrative. Next year, Odell Beckham's going to be great. But do it remember help. that Jarvis had a whole bunch of targets last year, and he was – Pretty close to useless for fantasy. But what do you do this year? Because every week, every single player that owns Odell Beckham has been starting him. And, I mean, this this week he was wide receiver 35 so far. Maybe he'll drop to 40 if there's a couple good wide receivers tonight. You know when you're throwing a party and you have to awkwardly invite somebody that you don't necessarily want at the party? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then you just kind of hope that they like might hang out in the other room? <laughs> That's the Odell Beckham that you're, you asked for what for this year? You can't trade him before the trade deadline. No. He's worth nothing of what you want for him. Because you could trade him, but you could trade him for Darius Slayton. Or you could trade him for for somebody that, you know, is middling and not what you want for the value. So he's at the party, he's in the room, don't look his direction for a victory and just deal with it. That's what I think. Well what yeah, what you have to do is just hold on because two of the next three weeks you have a matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But then those first two weeks of the fantasy playoffs, you get the Bengals, you get the Cardinals. And it would be very surprising for him to fail in those games. It'll exactly. also be very surprising for Odell Beckham owners to be in the playoffs. Oh, it's, I mean, that's you yeah. because you are putting a bad product in your lineup on a weekly basis. All right. What about this guy, though? And, and for the rest of the wide receiver stinkers, I want you guys to tell me if you're worried or where you've adjusted expectations. But Juju, just three for 44, six targets. He's got five games outside the top 40 this year. Has Cleveland on Thursday, then Cincinnati and Cleveland again. Juju played third fiddle in this game. Deontay Johnson looked good. James Washington, James Washington had, a had a big game. game. Yeah, I, I feel like I adjusted my expectations on Juju really early in the season. When when. When they went to Mason Rudolph and then we saw Devlin Hodges for for a minute, Juju became a guy that I think is a fine start on a usual basis and a bad start on certain matchups. This was a week where, you know, I I was not in on that top 24 water, but I didn't expect him to be in the top 24 this week. It was a, you know, you, you worried about Jalen Ramsey and how much that's going to do. You look at the schedule coming up. Uh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Arizona. I think Juju's going to be absolutely fine in those matchups. He's still a a, a playmaker. He's a game breaker. He's going to be absolutely fine in good matchups. All right. Are you worried about Stephon Diggs? Three for 49, six targets, no Thielen, maybe needs Thielen, six games outside the top 40 this year. Uh, worried as in like he won't have any more big games? No. But he's just – he's a – He's a liability. He's very boom bust. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that's exactly. He's a boom bust player. Kind of thought he should have caught that slant touchdown. That hit him in the hands. It was, it was a tough catch, but I expected yeah, things okay. to come down. With I'm, that. I'm recalling what you were talking about. Yes, he should have caught that ball. And you get Denver and a bye week coming up. So that's you know Chris Harris Jr. Right. Uh, and then a bye week. Not not the best for for Diggs. Calvin Ridley. Oh, yeah. I, I'm all about. Look, I would buy Calvin Ridley cheap if Austin Hooper is. 
is Fair. down for a couple of weeks uh, off of a bad game for Ridley, uh, I mean, I, I think Ridley has a fine rest of the season. Sammy Watkins needs to be on your bench. Yep. He's, uh, he's been worthy of starting in game one of the season, <laughs> and that's it. That's literally yep. it. Yeah. Uh, five for 39, doesn't look like he's going to do it at nope. this point. A.J. Brown, huge nine, no, disappointment. But, but nine targets, Andy. Yeah. Nine targets from Patrick Mahomes. Lizard targets. All right. A.J. Brown, one catch. Mike Very Williams, two catches. Zach Pascal, two catches. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Brian Hoyer problems. Uh, Darren Waller, Joni Smith, Chris Herndon. Herndon, just one catch on his welcome back week. I'd be more – I'd look his way moving forward. We're talking about losing Austin Hooper and things like that. If Herndon's been let go – I was not going to play him until he played a game and we saw snap counts and we saw opportunities. Now, apparently he missed some blitz pickups, got taken off the field. It's, I mean, it's risky business, but we're talking tight ends. And then Jonu Smith, four for 30, not a great game. On a game where Tannehill looked good. Darren Waller, three for 40. Um, the Hawk strap with Jeff Driscoll was three for 47 on oh, six targets. They've got a plan. Yeah, not a great game. No Stafford. Not to throw it to you. Uh, you yeah. stink. You dropped it. <laughs> but uh, the hot man, the hawk strap. It was o- it was okay. I mean, three for forty seven with Driscoll was okay, but he just him. And, I was just excited to have Stafford in that game. Him and Sammy Watkins. They have so <laughs> they week one us. week they one destruction. On week I, one. I was I was looking this up. So Sammy Watkins, uh, right now going into this week, he's the wide receiver twenty nine on the year still. He's in the 20s. Right. So I was like, well, what about, let's take week one out. Since week two and on, he is the wide receiver 66. Mm. 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 66, mm. you say, huh? Just <laughs> ahead of Alex Erickson. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Sinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. <laughs> odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. They need. Do they make? Hey, like, Andy Reid, do you have any comments on Sammy Watkins' performance in the game? Hmm. D- hmm. Mm. 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 Does Odor Eaters have like reptile defense? Mm. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Mm. All right. Want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine uh, Auction, a Josh Allen signed jersey yesterday. Oh. You know what it went for? Eighty-five dollars. <laughs> Oh, that's excellent. $85.99, Mike. Oh, uh, that's not as good. Not as cheap as you thought. Hundreds of daily auctions, your favorite players, your favorite teams, the best gifts ever because these are authentic, certified autographs. You got to check them out. Use the code BALLERS, pristineauction.com. That'll do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow with some big waiver wire pickups. Brian, yep. Brian Hill, I'm looking at you. Maybe... Maybe Wayne Gallman. We'll see what happens with Saquon. Absolutely. Hope you close out that victory today, Foot Clan. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.